Hello everyone, I'm Jim Abiel. Welcome to Beyond Second Cognition. For those of you that follow our work, I'm pretty sure you've heard me ask this question. For, for those of you who are new to our work or just stumbling upon our channel for the first time or here recently, then you are not familiar with our channel and the reason for it. So I'm going to do a mild recap. As a matter of fact, this whole podcast is going to be a recap of things we have shared all throughout our work. This recap is based on a singular question, and that question is, what is the point? What does the question spark in your mind? Do you think I'm asking, what's the point of this channel? Or what's the point of us doing what we're doing? No, the question is for you, the listener, to ask yourself, what is the point about any and everything you do? For the recap, this channel is Indal and I sharing our journeys on our path to conscious discovery. My path is mine, and my aim is to grow and expand my consciousness, and I chose to share tidbits of the insights I've learned along my continued and ongoing path. His path is his, and his aim is also to grow and expand his consciousness, and he too chooses to share tidbits of his insights he has learned along his continued and ongoing path. Do we share everything we know and have learned? Nope. We share enough to give the seeker of greater expanded awareness an opportunity to look at something from a different perspective in order to grow their own awareness. That's the point of this channel and the point of what we are doing. But back to the question, what is the point? We've been doing videos, podcasts, books, and blogs for about five years now, and we have seen the same predictable behaviors time and time again from people that think they know everything, and the predictableness is that we are accused of thinking we know everything by those that have barely delved into our work. From this perspective, it is pathetic that humans are so controlled and manipulated that they are that freaking predictable. So, my question again, what's the point? When you come to YouTube to watch a video, not just our videos, but any video, what is the point? Are you watching for entertainment purposes? Are you watching to confirm your limited and rooted belief systems? Or are you seeking to expand yourself beyond what you already know? I've seen many people that claim to be seekers of truth, but the moment they hear anything that goes beyond their limited and rooted beliefs, they try to start a debate or a pissing contest over what they think they know and how we, because they think differently, are somehow wrong. What is the point of that type of engagement? If you are truly seeking truth or information to expand yourself, do you even give yourself the opportunity for expansion by trying to start a debate? Do you, when you feel yourself going on the defensive to defend what you know, even take the time to contemplate the information? Contemplation doesn't happen in an instant. It is a process. So, what's the point? I produced a video back last year called Condition to Conflict, and I will try to put a link in here. I explain the process of how we cannot share perspectives and ideas because we have been conditioned to, to, through psychological manipulation to defend our beliefs and what we think that we know. I'm going to include in this podcast a part of a script that I wrote several years back and we have the original podcast over on Patreon and it's called The Rooted Perspective. Many of you will think that this information doesn't apply to you, but I assure you, it applies to everyone. Our perceptions are not what we see when we look at the world around us. They are how we interpret the world through our senses. In this 3D world, we have been indoctrinated and told how to perceive the world around us using only our five primary senses. Because of this, in a lot of cases, we all perceive this world in the same or similar manner based on our experiences, but are our perceptions real or even accurate in most cases? Many psychological studies have been conducted on witnesses to see how people's perspectives differ from one another after having experienced an event. A majority of the case studies available to the public show that people can witness the same event and there are as many different recalls of the event as there are participants in the study. What does this mean? 
It means that everyone's perceptions are unique to them, even when they all share the same experience, but this doesn't mean that their perceptions aren't controlled to begin with. Since we have been producing videos and podcasts, it has been a very perception enhancing experience for us for many reasons. One reason is that it gives us food for thought in the comments that the viewers share on our videos. Another reason is that it has given us food for thought in the ways we individually perceive things as well. As we explain in our videos, conscious advancement and perceptual expansion is important and necessary for each individual to grow on their path. This process is an internal process that one must go through in order to expand themselves and their awareness. Our individual journeys are not about your expanding perceptual awareness, it is about ours. And your journey is not about our expanding awareness, it is about yours. This doesn't mean that we can't share our perceptions with each other as we expand in order to help each other expand our own perceptions or, you know, listen to each other by sharing our perspectives and expanding ourselves by using the other perspective as a platform to ponder internally. In this video presentation, we share here and over on Patreon, what we are doing is sharing our individual and collective perceptual awareness with others. As our awareness is expanding to give others food for thought on their own journey of expanding awareness. What we have witnessed repeatedly in the comments thread is that instead of heeding our advice on using the information as a platform to do your own intuitive and perceptual research, People are using the forum as an opportunity to share their perspectives about us as people and our journeys. A lot of these comments are supportive and encouraging to what we are doing, but some of them are negative and all the people want to do is debate us. Even though we've stated repeatedly, including doing a video dedicated to this mantra, the information is our experience and our perceptions at this time and presented on a take it or leave it basis. A lot of people perceive our stance as arrogant, and I'll explain why it's not, but first I must digress into the motivation and reason we have chosen to share this information. We have individually expanded our perceptual and soika awareness to what we are calling the second cognition. In perceiving the world around us from a higher level of perceptual awareness, we see the flaws in the perceptions and reality of the first cognition. We both feel intuitively that the information that we have to share about our individual and collective journeys on what we did to raise our awareness and expand our perceptions is something that everyone has the opportunity to benefit from like we have. We are sharing with others to give them an opportunity and tools to expand their awareness and develop themselves if they choose. We cannot make anyone else accept the information or utilize it, nor are we trying to. This is why it is presented on a take it or leave it basis. The reason our stance is not arrogant is because we have no emotional attachment to or personal investment in your outcome. If you take the perspective and ponder it and work with the information to expand your awareness, great. If you choose not to, great. We respect your choice in the matter and do not judge you for leaving it as long as you leave it and move on. Only a self-absorbed person will sit there and try to argue and debate the information with us even though they have not even considered it, much less contemplated it. There is a great difference in sharing insights, asking questions, and debating. Sharing insights is what we are doing with these videos to share our perceptions of our experiences and our perceptions of the information we have researched. Asking questions is when another person asks us questions about our perceptions of our experiences in order for us to elaborate more or to offer insights to their own perceptions or vice versa. Debating is arguing about a subject from two opposing views, most of the time with a winner at the outcome of the debate. A debating move typically starts with, you are wrong, well that's not my experience, or so and so says differently, and continues downhill from there. We can only write from our perspectives. We cannot write from anyone else's perspective, nor will we try to. We, individually, can only perceive our experiences from the level of perceptual awareness we are operating at or from the perspective of where we have been. 
we cannot perceive our experiences from a perspective we have not yet reached. I have learned that as I expand my awareness, my own perceptions of my experiences and information have changed because I perceived the experiences differently or contemplated the information from a higher level of awareness. Endel has experienced this as well. You cannot write from my perspective and you cannot perceive my experiences from an experiential perspective even if you've had a similar experience because my experiences are mine, they are not yours. This doesn't mean that we can't share our perspectives with others and not glean insights from their thoughts of our perceptions we've shared. This does mean that neither perspective, yours nor mine, is up for debate. Just because you've perceived a similar experience of yours different than I perceive mine or you perceive information differently than I do doesn't mean that your perception is right and mine is wrong, nor does it mean that the way I perceive my experience or information is right and yours is wrong. What it means is that our perspectives are at different levels of awareness. Mine may be higher than yours, yours may be higher than mine, but I won't know the answer to that and you won't know the answer until we each individually contemplate it within our own mind. Now, you may think that you are right continually after you've contemplated it and vice versa, but what you think for your journey and your path is none of my business and mine yours. The same applies for everyone. Second cognition is a higher level of perceptual awareness. We do not know if you are there or not, but we definitely know that we are there. The differing opinions that we've witnessed in the comments thread pretty much have been from a first cognition perspective. This is not a judgment against any commenter. It is an observation from others that have already experienced that perspective and has expanded or our perceptions beyond it. The one thing that Endel and I do as a common practice that most people don't is question our perceptions of our experiences and question how we perceive information as we go through the process of raising our perceptual awareness. We know our experiences are real. How we perceive our experiences when they happen will change as we raise our perceptual awareness and we also know from direct experience. This does include how we process information. It is common that most people do not alter their perceptions of most things, especially information, once they have formed a perception about it. We, on the other hand, expect our perspectives to alter and change as we do, which is why we share this information with others to show them that being stuck in your perspectives is what keeps you from expanding your awareness. I see a lot of people that understand what we are doing and are taking the information we share to heart and reevaluating their own perspectives and expanding themselves by doing the internal soika work that is required to expand yourself. I see many more people that do not understand and are continually trying to debate or argue their differing perspective without an ounce of contemplation of the information we share. These people are stuck in their perspectives. This is not a judgment. It is an observation from others that have spent many years stuck in their perspective and we know what the classic symptoms of rooted perspectives look like because we have experienced it. Moving forward, I will call these people rooters and the phenomenon rooting. Rooting is a very subtle and effective defense mechanism of the ego and a very difficult habit to break. When the ego comes across an idea or a belief that it resonates with, and I use bunny ears there, they glom onto the good feeling and embrace the idea as truth and then stick to their perspectives of that truth regardless of what they encounter that contradicts it, regardless if it is through information or through erroneously perceived experiences. You've heard the idiom, when you stand for nothing you will fall for anything. This is a subtle form of ego manipulation used by the first cognition world to condition people into rooting into their beliefs. This idiom, if taken at face value, will spark the ego to dig its heels in on any idea so they do not get misdirected in the face of lies. But first cognition is pretty much nothing but lies. Oh, there are some truth spackled in there, but when you remove the bullshit from the picture, what truth is out there can be contained in a teaspoon. When you become aware and you sever the habit of rooting, you become more aware and better able to detect the bullshit and keep from rooting out of habit. 
you learn to question everything. Just because you question everything doesn't mean that you discard everything. Second cognition is about recognizing the truth when it is presented in the mix of bullshit, but it also means that you do not cling to what you perceive as truth. Truth is not fluid, but your perceptions are, and when you allow your perceptions to be fluid, the truth or what appears as truth will alter and change with your level of perceptual awareness, because with raised perceptual awareness, you will be able to perceive more. This means that you are painting a greater picture perceptually of the event or situation in order to gain greater understanding of the situation in front of you. I mean, think about it. How much of life can be perceived from a photo? How well can you see a picture when half of it is missing? Think about that. There is far more to perceiving the world around us than what we get through information and the limited sensory input from our five primary 3D senses. And it is only by questioning and observing everything around us, by using your other senses and expanding your awareness and your perceptions, can you even see the larger picture, even the larger picture of your own experiences. Rooting keeps you in place. Rooting stalls your soika on its quest for understanding. Rooting only serves the controllers that want you rooted in the perspective they have painted for you. There is so much bullshit information out there, especially in the theosophical controlled New Age and religious doctrines, and rooters love to glom onto it and hold it with a death grip. I've been there and done that, as has Endel, and we have both expanded our perceptual awareness beyond it. Most of the rooters that are trying to debate our perspectives are the ones still firmly rooted in the Theosophical, New Age, and or religious ideologies, and we know from experience that rooted perspective is not all there is to expanding awareness. We have raised our perceptions beyond it and know the rooted perspective is false. For the rooters, debating our perspective isn't the answer to the equation. Only pondering this information and raising your awareness is the only thing that will sever your roots and allow you to expand yourself beyond the rooted state. We've already done this. A friend of mine stated once before that we all establish our base camps along the way. The ones that never move from those base camps are the rooters. They step into the camp environment they choose and they start putting down roots within that system and never move. Here's the problem with cognitive rooting. Have you ever seen a tree move or run? Granted, a tree is a tree, but the point is that once you become rooted, you become morbid, and you start to ossify and grow rigid in your mindsets and your perceptual awareness. Once you ossify and go rigid in your perceptions, that is the point in which cognitive advancement ceases. You will never see any other perspective than your own rooted belief system, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is the first cognition. It is a species rooted in traditions that it chooses not to allow themselves to adapt and grow. It is rooted in political ideologies and especially rooted in every kind of mystical, spiritual, or religious belief system you can name. In order to advance your soika, your spirit, you have to willfully uproot yourself from these ossified systems of perceptual beliefs. You have to become cognitively flexible, and that doesn't happen if one chooses to stay rooted and unbending in their perceptions. As we have progressed on our own paths of understanding, we have had to stay flexible in order to adapt to new information and insights. One can step into an enhanced and advanced state of perceptual awareness without any need for artificially induced altered states. These presentations that we do are designed to help our subscribers understand that in order to advance your awareness, you have to learn to step back and look at the bigger picture. You know, the picture that the controllers don't want you to see. Through their indoctrinational educational system, they have very deviously blessed us with a form of cognitive tunnel vision. It is like looking at the world through a tube and never seeing what lies beyond our field of vision and unfortunately never questioning whether there is anything beyond what we are allowed to see and arguing and defending the tube when someone else tries to tell you there is more of the picture outside of your field of vision. 
Through these videos, we are providing an invitation for people to undo all this tunnel vision programming and to start to perceive a larger picture. How many times have you said or heard other people say, I never looked at it that way before? These videos or podcasts are designed to help those who are interested in seeing things in ways that they've never looked at them before. Sitting rooted with the blinders on with no ideas about anything beyond what you've been told to see and believe will only leave you rooted in place. Everyone who listens to these podcasts are perfectly allowed to disagree with what we see, but you are not in a position to debate what we see just because you don't or won't try to see it. We are sharing our perspectives and insights and we know what we perceive is not what you perceive individually. That doesn't mean that our perceptions are necessarily better than your own, but I think it's fair to say that at this point we might see a bigger picture than those rooted in their base camps do. You are not going to grow yourself so long as you stay rooted where you are. We didn't write the rules, ladies and gentlemen, and that is a statement of pure fact. Take it or leave it. To advance yourself and grow, you have to pull off the blinders of limited perception. For if you don't, you will still be looking at life through a tube. You will not be growing, and you will remain rooted firmly where you are. You have to oftentimes look at and read things that you don't like in order to help tear down those blinders. Always reading what feeds your roots only keeps you more firmly rooted where you are. To see farther with your soika, you have to look farther, and that means looking at things that you don't like. If you want comfort zone and laziness, then stay rooted where you are. If you want to expand and grow, then learn to see and perceive beyond your rooted perceptions. The more you grow, the more you will grow, but it's not going to happen if you stay firmly rooted in your base camp with the roots that only dig deeper every time confirmation bias feeds those roots. One can't stay the same and expect to grow at the same time. It is an impossibility and a cognitive fact of development. Wow. I wrote that script over two years ago with the help of Endel and a friend, and sadly, I am having to revive it because what's the point? What is the point of you listening to our podcast if you're just going to argue with what you hear because of what you already believe? What is the point of calling yourself a seeker if you refuse to contemplate what you discover from all your seeking? What is the point of commenting because you disagree with what we have shared? Think about the times you've gone to someone else's channel and argued to defend your beliefs. How much did you expand from the experience or did you become more fully rooted in your own perspective? Now that's a question. What is the point of trying to start a debate because of what you hear disagrees with what you have experienced? Have you ever considered there could be more to your experience if you allowed yourself a different perspective? What is the point of seeking greater truth when you refuse to see it when it presents itself to you? I remember being a teenager and arguing with adults around me when they would tell me what life was like being an adult or not believing them when they told me, I know what you're going through, I've been there, when I was having a tough time in my youth. I remember genuinely thinking there was no way they understood because they were not me, but you know what? Regardless of my experience being different, they were 100% dead on in spite of my lack of perspective. I couldn't see it because I didn't have the experience of being an adult, in order to perceive what it was like, nor the wisdom to see that someone else could possibly know more than I did. And I think all teenagers go through that, so every single one of you who are listening right now need to reflect back on that time and think about how different your perspective was then when others tried to tell you about a greater perspective that was not in your experience yet. No matter what we have experienced, no matter what we know information-wise, we will never have all the information at our disposal. And the moment that we think that we have all the answers, whether it be right or wrong, that is when the roots start digging into the ground. My experience and internal wisdom has shown me time and time again that we do not and never will have all the information to complete a picture, any picture. So what's the point? of debating any perspective. There is no point.
your viewpoint and mine are still going to be limited. So instead of trying to defend your perspective of your viewpoint, try listening and contemplating so we can have a discussion about the differing perspectives. There are those of us over on Patreon that have gotten past the need to debate a perspective so that we can all have more information to contemplate and expand ourselves. My quest is to expand myself, and I know that it is an ongoing journey. Anything I present today is done so because it's a beneficial way for me to glean more from what I know. Will my perspective change as I grow? Absolutely. With or without negative Nelly comments, because that is what I continue to seek every day. And that, my friends, is the point.